Hello, my name's Oliver Whoopin' Great Wiki Pippy Dodo, and welcome to the... Um... It's the... It's the Earth and... Why? Tonight, the It's the Earth and, uh, show talks about Greenland. Greenland, Greenland, Greenland. Greenland. What is it? How did it get there, and what kind of hats do they wear? Well, we're not going to discuss any of those topics, but we are going to talk about Greenland. The first people arrived in Greenland from the Canadian island of Ellesmere around 2500 to 2000 BCE. From there, they colonized North Greenland as the first independence culture and South Greenland as the Sequoak culture, though they were later replaced by the Dorset people in early 700 BCE. The Dorset culture was the first culture to extend throughout the Greenlandic coastal areas, both on the west and east coasts. It lasted until the total onset of the Tool culture in 1500 AD. The Dorset culture population lived primarily from hunting of whales and caribou. And then they all died. Besides the colonization of the late Dorset people who lived there, the island was largely unpopulated until the 980s and the Norse colonization, so I'm going to assume that nothing happened at all, and they were all ghosts. Skipping wildly ahead, from 986, Greenland's west coast was settled by Icelanders and Norwegians through a contingent of 14 boats led by Eric the Red. They formed three settlements, known as the Eastern Settlement, the Western Settlement, and the Middle Settlement, boring name, on fjords near the southwesternmost tip of the island. They shared this island with the late Dorset culture inhabitants, who occupy the northern and western parts, and later with the Tool culture that entered from the north. Norse Greenlanders submitted to Norwegian rule in 1261 under the Kingdom of Norway. Later, the Kingdom of Norway entered into a personal union with Denmark in 1380 and from 1397 was part of the Kalmar Union, which I'm not going to talk about. And I've just been told that we've reached the budget for this section of the program, so we're going to have to skip ahead to the 1800s to present section. So, I should just quickly mention that there was a Norse colony that died off, and we'll be talking about that later. There was also a city called Gothav that was renamed Nuke, and also it was independent a couple times until it wasn't anymore. And... Oh, okay, uh, we need to move on. Right, so, this bit is going to have to go quick too, because I'm pressed for time. <clears throat> Originally, Greenland was a Norse colony until 1814 and the Treaty of Kiel, which I could talk about a bit, but... Anyhow, now Greenland belongs to the Danish monarchy, and then they all died. Denmark was occupied by the Nazis in 1940, cutting Greenland's ties to the monarchy. And then the Americans came and set up a few airports, and then everything was fine because Hitler was dead. The end. And, uh... Uh, there ends our history section. I'm sorry if it was a bit short. Um, I'm afraid we don't have the budget to continue going on. So, anyhow... Yeah, hope you enjoyed. I'm standing here on the north coast of Greenland in Tool, where... No, you're not! Shut up! I'm standing here on the north coast of Greenland in Tool, where the original peoples lived. It's also where the official language came from, in the 1200s. Greenlandic is a polysynthetic language that allows the creation of long words by stringing together roots and suffixes. It was brought to Greenland by the Tool people, and evolved and grew as more people entered the island. Modern Greenlandic is a mixture of uh, Danish, Norwegian, and Inuit, and, like most languages, stems from Latin. Cut. Due to its polysynthetic quality, Greenlandic is a very difficult language to learn. 
stemming from a mix of the original language of the Sakwa culture, many of Greenlandic's words are hyper-specific. Rather than having the words think, person, and should, they have ale tag pitsup sana, meaning, and then it is only a blind person who has made it. Should one think that a blind person has made it? There are, however, certain patterns and rhythms that one can follow in the Greenlandic language. I noticed, for example, that the collection of letters ale seem to come up a lot in reference to and, later, then, and fancy. It should be noted that fancy was not connected with another sentence but standing alone. The Greenlandic language also has some history. In the old orthography of the word afa, uh, spelled A-F-F-A-A, and meaning half of it, the two Fs are replaced by a GF, and an A is taken from the Now it's pronounced ah. That's the end. This was how it was pronounced from 1851 to 1973 because of a special alphabet invented by this clever man here. Wow. This is Samuel Kleinschmidt, and he is very clever. So clever that he invented a whole alphabet. Anyhow, in 1973, the monarchy took a long look at their alphabet and thought, yeah, 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 this is all great, but wouldn't it be better if it was long? So they made it longer. Unoslornas became Unusiuslornas. Atasieps became Atasapsieps. Sissimuts became Sitsitsimuts. But then they all died. Well, the language is dying anyways. Danish is still very prominent and slowly killing Greenlandic like English did to Welsh. So what do we do about it? Nothing. The end. understand the Norse colony in Greenland is fairly simple. One goes to Greenland, one dies, one is forgotten. What is harder to understand is why. I promise I'll make this quick. There are many theories as to why the Norse settlement in Greenland collapsed after surviving for some 450 to 500 years. Many factors have been suggested, such as cumulative environmental change, gradual climate change, conflicts with hostile Inuit tribes, or cultural conservatism and failure to adapt to an increasingly harsh natural environment. Numerous studies have tested these hypotheses, and some have led to significant discoveries. In The Frozen Echo, Kirsten Seaver contests some of the more generally accepted theories about the demise of the Greenland colony, and asserts that the colony, towards the end, was healthier than Diamond, and others have thought. Seaver believes that the Greenlanders could not have starved to death, but rather may have been wiped out by Inuit or unrecorded European tax, or they may have abandoned the colony for Iceland or Vinland. However, the physical evidence from archaeological studies of the ancient farm sites does not show evidence of attack. In 1514, the Norwegian Archbishop Erik Valkendorf planned an expedition to Greenland, which he believed to be part of a continuous northern landmass leading to the New World with all its wealth, in which he fully expected to still have a Norse population whose members could be pressed anew to the bosom of the church and crown after an interval of well over a hundred years. Presumably, the Archbishop had better archives than his dis- Oh my god, archives? Oh my god. Jesus, did I just say archives? It's archives. Jesus Christ. Anyways, where was I? Um, oh yes. Presumably, the archbishop had better 
archives at his disposal than most people, and yet he had not heard that the Greenlanders were gone. One intriguing fact is that very few fish remains are found among the middens. This has led to much speculation and argument. Most archaeologists reject any decisive judgment based on this one fact, however, as fish bones decompose more quickly than other remains, and may have been disposed of in a uh, different manner. Isotope analysis of the bones of inhabitants show that marine food sources uh, supplied more and more of the diet of the Norse Greenlanders, making up between 50 and 80 percent of the diet by the 14th century. One Inuit story recorded in the 18th century tells that raiding expeditions by European ships over the course of three years destroyed the settlement, after which many of the Norse sailed away south and the Inuit took in some of the remaining women and children before the final attack. However, despite all these theories, uh, nothing has been definitively proven. So, as we near the end of the program, we ask you, the viewer, what do you think happened to the Norse colony in Greenland? Look, I know this might not be very interesting, but just stay with me here. I'm trying to do some theory. But... Anyhow, uh, whisper your answers into an open envelope and send them into a trash can so no one can hear your boring, awful thoughts. I've been Oliver WG Whoopie Pippy Dodo, wishing you a goodbye, farewell, and as the Greenlanders would say, Unusio Swarna!